This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Opening series in the NBA and NHL playoffs starting to heat up as we get towards the latter part of those. Some series have already wrapped up, but some fun hockey and fun basketball the next couple of nights. Here to break down the playoff action for both nights is Tom Avecchia. We're going to talk to Tom today about his thoughts on NBA and NHL games for the next two days. Then I'll talk some Formula One in Miami and NASCAR out in Kansas. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Saunas. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Join here to kick things off by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. You, of course, know Tom from the solo shot over on the FanDuel Research podcast feed every Monday and Tuesday. Tom, happy Thursday to you. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been here. Uh, some of the props I spoke about last time, some of those have already come through. Uh, we still have the Cavs minus one and a half. That is still open. The Mavs to win the series is still open. The Bruins are in game six tonight. So that cashes if they, uh, if the Leafs win tonight, that goes to game seven. Well, you said or seven games, which is also right. plus 184. So that one's good regardless. Right. So that, that is solid. Uh, I'm doing good. I promise no Joe Maurer comments today, but I'm ready yeah. to roll. Yeah. Uh, Tom made a, it was it a joke. I think you think this, so I can't say joke, uh, <laughs> but he made a comment about how Joe, he thinks Joe Maurer did steroids in 2009 and it ruined my productivity for the entire day. Yesterday. <laughs> um, I spent, it somehow led to me bashing Derek Jeter's defense, which is justified um, and the correct outcome for a typical Wednesday. But I appreciate you being cognizant of my weak spots, Tom. Thank you for that. I have, listen, I have no issues about the MVP discussion. That's not what it's about for me. It's not about, who should have won it. It's literally just about the stats, but that's obviously a topic for a different time. Yeah. I mean, when you move to target field, which destroys left-handed power, things happen. Things happen. It definitely does uh, occur for sure. I Can you see that? Yeah. The Mauer bobblehead is right here. So he's, he's watching just so you know, <laughs> tread lightly. All right. We're going to talk to Tom here about the NBA and NHL for the next couple of nights and talk about Formula One and NASCAR in just one second. But first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. Our previews of the Kentucky Derby and the Kentucky Oaks already posted. We had Christina Blacker of FanDuel TV on Monday talking the Derby. Dubs Anderson of FanDuel TV on Wednesday talking the Kentucky Oaks. Also gave out his Derby pick there. Both those shows are on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV Plus. You get all the insights over there. The 150th Kentucky Derby is right around the corner, and FanDuel is the only sportsbook app where you can bet it. Plus, all customers can get a no-sweat derby bet up to $20. That's right. You get to $20 back if your derby horse does not win. So bet the derby on the same app where you bet all your favorite other sports, FanDuel. Just download to score your no-sweat derby bet up to $20 for the Kentucky Derby this Saturday. Must be 21 plus and reside in Arkansas, Arizona, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, New Hampshire, New Mexico, New York, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Dakota, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, or Wyoming. Offer valid on first Derby win wager. Ver verified FanDuel Racing account required. Refund issued in non-withdrawable racing site credit that expires on 6-10-24. Restrictions apply. See terms at racing.fanduel.com. Offer not available in D.C., Kansas, North Carolina, New Jersey, Tennessee, or Vermont. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER over to FanDuel.com slash RG. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. In Massachusetts, gambling helpline ma.org or claim under 327-5050 for 24-7 support. Or in New York, call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. Let's take a look now at the Thursday night NBA games beginning with the first game of the night. That is the Bucks and the Pacers spread here is an eight and a half. The Pacers are favored with the total of 214. And Tom, 
going to be tough to talk props here because everybody is hurt. Uh, so what is your read on this Pacers versus Bucks game as things currently stand? Yeah, this is looking like a, a regular season game with the injury <laughs> reports that we have. Obviously, we'd like to see everyone play. Really not expecting a Tentacumpo to play. Uh, I would lean towards Lillard playing a bit more just because, you know, in theory, the Bucks have more um, – more invested into a tennis Kumpo long-term. Like that's just, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, leaning on the under, I think that's certainly a spot to go. I do like the Bucks plus eight and a half. I think they can keep this close. You know, while Indiana has been good in this series, they've certainly struggled. It's, they show the, the signs of, yes, they have the skill to win games, but they're also, you know, in the playoffs for the first time. It, there's some inconsistencies in their game overall. So I like the Bucks plus eight and a half. I do like the under. And then it's got to be Siakam over eight and a half rebounds sitting at minus 130. All these players in now in the lineup. You know, frankly, he just didn't do enough in the last game. And, you know, this is rebounding, I should say, just, you know, with this stat, this spot. He's been actually really consistent throughout. So I will take that that number on the move. I just see that. Uh, on 130 right now. Minus 130. That's a, that's a fine line for over eight and a half. And, again, if I'm leaning on the under, maybe a little bit of struggles on offense for both teams realistically just because, you know, we're not seeing a full capacity from either team. I'll certainly take the rebounds. I'll take the under. I wouldn't mind taking the Bucks plus eight and then maybe trying to get the Pacers minus two, minus three live line, try and find some middle ground somewhere just because I do think the Pacers can win this game. I just think eight and a half is, is a little bit too much. Okay, so the prop recommendation from Tom, Pascal Siakam over 8.5 rebounds. That is minus 130 at FanDuel Sportsbook. But Tom, also a lean towards the Bucks plus 8.5 and, and potentially the under, which is currently at 214 at FanDuel Sportsbook with the under sitting at minus 110. Second game of the night is the Knicks and the 76ers for this one. 76ers favored by three. Total is 200 and a half. Tyrese Maxey made this game possible with his late game heroics uh, earlier on this week. How do you see game six playing out here, Tom? Uh, I'm hoping we see game end like 93 to 89, like something like that. <laughs> I want like a really, really low scoring game. So I like the under, really like the Knicks plus three. Um, again, a super slow gritty grindy game i think we're going to be in for you know that game went to overtime so we have to take the 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 amount of points that we saw in the most recent game with the grain of salt maxi was great obviously he's been fantastic throughout the series he's obviously um growing his stock overall but too many points from him i'm not taking an under on him but he could certainly hit the over while the under still being in play but the best prop for me is going to be tobias harris under 12 and a half points it's sitting at minus 132 He's had some really slow games. He had 19 in the most recent game. Again, game went to overtime. And realistically, for a lot of these teams, we know it's Embiid and Maxi up at the top. As we see for a lot of teams, as the playoffs go on, the shots are funneled to their main guys. So a player who was taking 12 or 13 field goal attempts per game in the regular season, all of a sudden he's taking eight or nine. And, you know, the defense is a little bit tougher from the Knicks. So he's going to be even less efficient on fewer field goal attempts. And that's what we're seeing with him when he's under, he's ending with under 10 points in some of these games. So when push comes to shove, the shots are going to be funneled to Embiid and Maxi, and it just doesn't leave any level of uh, trust or consistency for these players to get to a number when they're just not involved in the offense at a high usage rate. It's funny you mentioned that. Uh, we had Dr. Red Fang on Tuesday, and he said like his angle late in playoff series is taking the unders on role players because both there is less scoring because these teams know each other by that point, which means they know their offensive sets and things like that. So lower overall scoring, but like you said, they funnel work towards the stars. And late in that game against the Knicks in game five, it was all... I mean, I mean, Embiid finally took shots in the fourth quarter, which hadn't happened the entire series. You got Embiid towards the end there, but then also Maxi wasn't a lot of Harris. So same thought process from both of you. What issue is that the Harris number has gone down? It's now 11 and a half uh, plus 102 on the under. Is that low enough where you're backing off or do you still think there's value there, Tom? I mean, I think the correct answer is to shop around to find the best line. Sure. That's always the, the best answer. It moves one spot, you know, see what you can find. 11 and a half, I think is playable. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if it's, if you find 11 and a half, like minus 120, I wouldn't play that, but I would, I would go for it now. Like it, it's obviously super thin, but shop around, find the best line available. If you can find the 12 and a half at minus 150 instead of minus 132, where I saw it a, a little while ago, I would still take that. Okay. 
So see what you can get out there. Uh, maybe we see Harris get back up at some point to 12 and a half at FanDuel as well. Under 11 and a half plus 102 right now. And Tom does still think there is a bit of value there. But like in the Knicks plus three in this game as well. Couple of Friday games in the NBA. Uh, we got the Cavs and the Magic where the Magic are favored by four. And then Mavericks and Clippers uh, where the Mavs are eight point favorites there. Any initial thoughts for you on the Friday games at first glimpse, Tom? So the Cavs plus uh, plus the points is interesting, at least as of now. Jared Allen didn't play in the most recent game. If he doesn't play, Cavs could be in a tough spot. I like Evan Mobley for a rebounding prop. Evan Mobley over 10 and a half boards. It's sitting at plus 102. You know, combined with Jared Allen being questionable, the, the games three and four that the Cavs lost, they got out-rebounded by a ton. 51 to 32 in game three, 43 to 29 in game four. And like, this is the thing that the Cavs should be good at with Allen and Mobley in there, these two big men. So if he's out and considering how they got beat in those two games, Mobley has to do more if they're running with a smaller lineup because the Magic play good defense. They can get a little bit of size out there. So I will go to Mobley. And if Allen gets ruled in, I'll have more interest in the Cavs at that point. Okay. So. Checking out Evan Mobley, his rebound prop, 10 and a half right now, plus 104 on that one for the uh, Cavs versus the Magic Clippers, Mavs. Anything for you in that one, Tom? It's a really tough game just because we don't know if Kawhi's going to play. Yeah. It, it, it's really tough overall. It will be as effective it, if he does play, you know, all those questions. Right. And, and like you said, like he didn't, he hasn't looked great. Um, you know, as I mentioned up the top, as I said on the podcast two weeks ago, I have the Mavs in the series. So. I don't want to double down on them. I wouldn't mind uh, a Luca rebounding plus assist prop. Maybe not a whole lot of scoring, but we know we could still get to 25, 10, and 10. He always pushes towards a triple-double anyway, regardless of how many points. So it, I'm very hesitant on this game just because I already have the Mavs. I don't want to double down on anything. Right. Okay. So what Tom is seeing for the next couple of nights, uh, likes Evan Mobley over 10 and a half rebounds plus one Oh four on Friday, Knicks plus three for tonight. Tobias Harris under 12 and a half. You can find that or under 11 and a half plus one Oh four at FanDuel Sportsbook. Pascal Siakam over eight and a half rebounds minus 130, And then liking the unders for tonight's game as tonight's games as well. Only one game in the NHL for tonight, Tom. That is the Bruins and the Maple Leafs. Obviously, big injury question marks here as well. Maple Leafs slight favorites for this one, but pretty intriguing game overall. Boston with a chance to close things out here. What are you seeing for Bruins versus Maple Leafs? Uh, awesome game tonight. This is going to be an awesome game. This is a, you know these teams have played numerous times over the last however many years in the playoffs. So, as I mentioned, we spoke about the Bruins' six games. This is it. That cash is. If it goes to seven games, that's extra. Austin Matthews did not play in their most recent game, and there's a, a lot of speculation about it because they reported it as an illness, but then he was at morning skate, and it was noted by someone that if it's an illness and he's at morning skate, those two things don't line up because if, an Ill, if it's an illness, he shouldn't be around the team. So there's a, you know some things going on. It's the playoffs. I'm not surprised we're getting full information from any team. So you could look to a John Tavares shot prop. I will also say a Bruins goalie save prop is probably going to be my favorite. I did not see those posted, you know, a little while ago. They're not posted as of yet. Not sure if it's going to be Jeremy Swayman or Linus Olmark in net, but a goalie shot prop, uh, excuse me, a goalie save prop is what I'm saying. A goalie save prop from the Bruins, because when I'm looking at this overall, if the Leafs aren't taking enough shots, to increase their offensive pressure when they're in a do or die game, they aren't operating in the correct manner. And when we look to the Leafs overall, they've actually controlled the shot volume in this series overall, 343 total shot attempts to the Bruins, 274. So the Leafs are still operating normally on offense and combined with this being an elimination game, they have to take the shots or they're just not trying enough. So a goalie save prop from the Bruins, old Mark or swim and wherever it's going to be, it's probably going to be in the mid twenties. That's fine. Tavera shot prop, depending on what it is, if Matthews is ruled in or out. Oh, and and under six and a half minus 164. I will buy the extra. I will buy it up and play the under. Okay. So under six and a half, if you can alternate um, total goals. There we go. Trying to find it. Uh under six and a half goals, minus 164. Yes. On that alternate number. Uh Tom is liking that one. So keep tabs on the injury discussion as things go here for the Bruins versus Maple Leafs. See what you can see there, but uh, potentially you said a John Tavares shot prop was the one you were considering as well. Yeah, it's, you know, you could, you could look to him at, at four plus again, this is 
combined with the two things. Matthews doesn't play, yeah. as we saw the most recent game, and they have to shoot the puck because they're going to be eliminated if they don't. So, right. like, we're, we're factoring in both things. Even though it's a quote-unquote tough defense, like, this is something that we see in the NFL where, you know, a, a quarterback's going against a good pass defense, but he still can get to overs on attempts, overs on yards, just because he's in a passing game script. Like, this is a shoot-first kind of mentality for the Leafs tonight because they're in an elimination game. Would the shot prop, uh, the sorry, the save prop for the goalies be affected by Matthews not playing? Like, would they still be able to get the same amount of shot volume off? Or would you be con more concerned about that number if he can't go? Uh, not really. They okay. still good. I mean, Tavares, Nylander, Marner should, are all operating normally. So I'm not really too worried about it overall. Okay, so key tabs on the goalie props once they are up at FanDuel for the Bruins and the Maple Leafs, which should be a fun game tonight. Friday night, couple of games, Canucks and Predators, followed by Stars versus Knights. Tom, when you look at those two games at first glance, anything stand out to you right now? Uh, it, it's tough to judge, you know, what we're going to see in these games. I have interest in the Predators' money line. Uh, they did burn me over the weekend, uh, but then they won I think the they burned day. a lot of people. Yeah, that that last uh, six-second goal, six, goal with six seconds left. Um, it pains me to say this, but I think the best spot is Phil Forsberg under four and a half shots for the Predators. He's by far their best offensive player. He's their best goal scorer. He has at most four shots in any game this series. There's it's thing at minus 165, I think, which is a good bit of juice. He just isn't getting the volume that he normally does on a day by day or on a normal game by game basis because the Canucks know he's the best player and they're focusing on him to take him away at, out of the offense. It just, it is what it is. So I can't trust a player to get the five shots if he hasn't done it before, even though they're in an elimination game, the Canucks are just too solid on defense right now to trust going to an over four and a half. So he's a, he's a great player to go to in the regular season when they're in a, an easy matchup, but I, I just can't get there in the playoffs. That's it's simply what it is. Uh, Forsberg's shot prop now minus 168 on the under at four and a half. Uh, so pretty similar to what you had at 165, uh, but a little bit of movement towards the under there. Is it a similar dynamic in the NHL as with the NBA where you see the defense kind of win out more as the series goes along and they get more familiar with the offense? Or is that not the case here? It's certainly the case where we know like teams run set plays off of offensive zone draws, right. where they put players on certain sides and then they you know, a, a defender on a certain side. And like, you know, we saw with Ovechkin, you know, he, we know where he operates. We know where Forsberg likes to operate on the power play and, and teams, you know, uh, do like a, a, essentially a QB spy to take him out of it. Yeah. Okay. So Forsberg under six, four and a half goals, minus 168. That's like for the four and a half shots. Four shots. Half I think you would take under four and a half goals. <laughs> I would too. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that one as well. Uh, Stars versus Knights. Dallas making this one interesting, Tom. Uh, this series. Uh, any thoughts for you on this one? Or are you exposed enough to the Stars where you would rather just uh, let this individual game play out? Yeah, I kind of got to let this one play out. I have yeah. a Stars Cup future. A Stars minus one and a half. So I do need them to win this game in order for that minus one and a half to cash. So I, again, I don't mind buying it to six. Uh, sure. And taking under, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do in the playoffs as we've seen, you know, game ending three to two and then an empty net goal kind of ruins the five and a half. So I, I prefer to actually buy them to six, six and a half and go to minus 150, minus 160, whatever it is. All righty. Well, it should be a fun couple of nights on the ice and on the hardcore as well. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Find him on the solo shot every Monday and Tuesday. We'll be back here on covering the spread again in the very near future as well. Tom, appreciate the time as always. Enjoy that and have a fantastic weekend as well. Same to you. Thanks for having me. All righty. Big thank you once again to Tom and find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Before we close up for today, got to do uh, some NASCAR and some Formula One because free practice one Formula One is going to be tomorrow. One of a show before then. So let's take a look over at uh, some things for Miami for this weekend and break down what we're seeing there for Formula One in Miami. Obviously, Max Verstappen, the big time favorite to win. He is minus 600 at FanDuel Sportsbook. The implied odds there, 85.7%. I've got him at 74%, probably too low. So I do show value on Sergio Perez and uh, Carlos Sainz to win. I'm not going to take that, though, because it's just so hard to bet against Verstappen at this point. Uh, Verstappen qualified pretty poorly last year in Miami and still beat Perez, who qualified in the poll. So we're going to not touch that. I do think we can buy into 
the other top drivers, though, via the podium market. And that's where I see Carlos Sainz sitting at plus 175. And I think there's pretty good value in that number. So I do want to take Sainz to podium plus 175 at FanDuel Sports. But Sainz has been awesome so far this year. He has finished on the podium in three of the four races that he has run so far. And he's shown really good speed in Pretty much every race, not as much in Shanghai a couple weeks ago, but like beyond that, it has been a very good year to be Carlos Sainz. Ferrari and McLaren kind of in this duel for the number two spot behind Red Bull. Sounds like McLaren is bringing a pretty big upgrade for this week as well, which maybe does push Lando Norris up, but that's accounted for in the betting markets because Norris right now is plus 130 to podium, whereas Leclerc is plus 150, Sainz is plus 175. But again, Signs running well this year. I believe Ferrari is a slight upgrade for Miami as well. And so we could see both these teams potentially make slight gains. If McLaren has a bigger upgrade, it also could work against them because it's a sprint race weekend. So they're only going to have one practice to really get the setup fine-tuned toward that new redesigned car. So when you put it all together, I've got signs at 41% to finish on the podium. His implied odds are 36.4%. So I feel like this is a good value, even considering the potential for McLaren to improve and thus push Landon Norris up a bit. Uh, he has to fight with Leclerc as well, which is always tough, but I think there's value in signs. So signs have been good to us so far this year, and there's, at least based on my numbers, still value in buying into him now despite that. So we'll go with signs to podium plus 175 as the one bet I like for Miami this weekend. I did want to keep an eye on Alpine. Um, they had an upgrade themselves in Shanghai. Esteban Ocon finished 11th with that upgrade. His odds of FanDuel Sports are for a top 10 plus 470. I would need that quite a bit longer uh, to go there, but maybe it's a situation where you see where Ocon is after qualifying on Saturday and see maybe you want to buy in there. If he qualifies 14th within striking distance of the top 10, but also uh, still going to be longer than this number, that could be a spot where you buy an Ocon because uh, he had the upgrades in Shanghai. They've kind of gotten a read on those upgrades now. Maybe that's enough to get Ocon in the top 10, but at plus 470, not personally buying there. So again, the one F1 bet for this week is going to be signs to podium plus 175. As for NASCAR, they are in Kansas this weekend, which is one of the best tracks on the circuit and always enjoy the races there. And I actually think there's a good amount of value in this one, specifically in the outright market. Ryan Blaney is 22 to one to win this week. And that feels pretty long. Now, Ford has not won a race yet this year. There are 11 races in Ford is over so far. They have finished fifth or finished second in five of those 11 races. So they've been competitive. You can also downplay that by saying that two of those are super speedways where it's not going to matter as much. So it's been a rough year, but that is fully accounted for in this number of Blaney at 22 to one. And Blaney has been kind of the, the shining light of Ford so far because he ran up front in Las Vegas and finished third there. And Las Vegas is the sister track to Kansas. He, Ran out front for all of Texas, then got wrecked later on that race, but uh, led some laps there, finished inside. I think he finished third in the second stage as well. And then Dover last week, which is a very different track, but does use the same rules package. Uh, Blaney had another good run there, led, I think, around 50 laps and had a fifth place average running position. So Blaney's been good at the faster tracks using this rules package, despite the fact he is in a four. So we put it here at Kansas, a track where his finishes are not good, but he's had a lot of speed in the past. Just a lot of stuff that's worked against him. Like he's had tire violations. He had a wreck where he was, I think, battling for second at one point too. I think that his finishes here underplay how good and how fast he is at this track. I've got Blaney at 7.7% to win, which feels kind of high, uh, but the implied odds are 4.4%. So good amount of wiggle room to be above market on Blaney and potentially be wrong, but still wind up above market on. So I want to bet Ryan Blaney to win 22 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. Other bet where I show value right now is in Austin Hill to finish inside the top 10. He is plus 850 at FanDuel Sportsbook. This could be a reach, uh, but my model adores Austin Hill. And uh, based on what he's done in the Xfinity series, where he has been fantastic on this track type, one last year in Vegas, which is a very similar track, been good at places like Darlington and Kansas as well. So he's very good in this track type. And then he jumps in an RCR car. And RCR has had an awful year, but 
they've been much better in this rules package than they have been in the short track rules package. Like Kyle Busch last week ran up front the entire day, won the pole, quali- or finished fourth in that one. And he also finished inside the top 10, I believe in both Vegas and Texas as well. And then Austin Dillon also got a top 10 in Texas. So the only times that we've seen RCR be competitive has been on this track type. And Hill is a good driver on this track type too. This is pretty narrative and stupid and it does not matter. Uh, but like they did run a one-off with a, an RCR did run a one-off with a driver here back in the spring of 2019. That, that driver was Tyler Reddick. Uh, Reddick finished ninth in that race. Reddick's pretty good, but so was Austin Hill. And he's also a lot older than Reddick was at that time. So, you know, it's narrative and stupid. It doesn't actually matter, but it's kind of fun to see that they've done this before uh, with a driver of... Uh, in a third car for RCR at Kansas in the spring race. So for me, it's really about Hill. Uh, it's about the fact that they're better in this rules package. I have Hill at 15.9% to finish top 10. His implied odds are 10.5%. Maybe I'm too high on Austin Hill, but um, I think it's it's justified enthusiasm. So we'll take Hill top 10 to plus 850 to go with the Blaney outright at 22 to 1. That's all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Big thank you once again to Tom Vecchio for joining us to break down his thoughts on NBA and NHL games for the next couple of nights. Find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across the NBA and NHL. We'll talk to you tomorrow to break down UFC 301 and some EPL. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 